Funding for the interview show is provided by Miller High Life, the champagne of beers. If you've got the time, we've got the beer. Lifeway Foods, makers of Lifeway Kefir. Visit LifeWayFoods.com to learn more about Lifeway's complete line of probiotic products, including new non-dairy plentiful and farmer cheese. Lifeway, love your guts. Byline Bank. This is the story of Village Fresh Market, written by me. This is my house, my home, uh, everything. I see these people more than I see my family. This is my life. I love it. Everybody has a story. Byline Bank helps you write yours. Jeff Tweedy is the front man for one of my favorite bands called Wilco. He's also the front man of the band Tweedy, which is a family affair. His son, Spencer, plays drums. He also has a couple of solo albums out. Uh, but his latest music is with Wilco on an album called Ode to Joy. Please welcome Jeff Tweedy. Hello. Thank you. Hello. How are you? I'm good. Good to see you. Good to see you. Good I appreciate you, you coming on, on the show. Um, I, I was thinking about this uh, last night, which is that you've, you were on the show when we did it, it just a live show several years ago, and about a minute and 11 seconds in, the uh, firefighter came through and thought it was too crowded, and then the owner of the hideout, Tim Tutton, somehow warded him off, and we were able to go on with the interview. Right. Then you were on the show another time that we did at the Abbey Pub, and a few months later, the Abbey Pub burned down. <laughs> and so there's like, I hope this third time is not of a, another fiery theme. <laughs> I had forgotten about that. Now I'm, now I'm scared. Yeah, I was you nervous would, you would not before have come I on. came up here. Now I'm, now I'm frightened. Well, <laughs> speaking of, of, of frightened, I, I, I hope you don't mind me asking. I, I kind of on the same theme, I, I saw on the news that your your house was shot at. <clears throat> Not, I don't think intentionally at you. I, <laughs> we no, hate it, Wilco. Yeah, it was a, yeah, the the uh, north-south alt-country beefs are really <laughs> like getting out of hand. <laughs> yeah. But it was, your house was, there was gunfire. Yeah, there was gunfire. It was terrifying. Uh, it was just, you know, like two in the morning. Uh, Susie and I were we were up, and um, just heard the loudest sound you've ever heard in your life. It sounded like it was inside the house. It was just like seven to ten gunshots, and then um, somewhere within those ten shots, uh, our alarm went off in our house at the same time because they'd broken a window. The gun, the bullets had. Yeah, bullet had yeah. broken a window. Okay. So, so, uh, the, so the alarm was going off. So we really couldn't hear what was going on outside. You didn't hear like a you know, tire screech or yeah. anything like that. Uh, natural inclination is to turn off the alarm, you know, because like when you accidentally yeah, set off the alarm, you just turn it off. And then we're like, oh, why do we do that? <laughs> you know, uh, because that immediately calls. Yeah, we turned it off so quickly that the, the they never the alarm company never called back and the cops <laughs> never came. Yeah. You know, um, the news headline was, I mean, I, I guess it was true, but it, it was kind of hysterical. It said Tweety's terror. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It got turned into to clickbait pretty quickly. It was, you know, which is unfortunate. You yeah. know, it was, it was scary enough. And it's like if you live in a live in a country that's armed to the teeth. I guess that can happen to anybody, you know? It's really, really sad, but but yeah, there, there were people, you know, uh, Tweety's house sprayed with bullets, and, yeah. uh, you know, people were getting people to click on the story by insinuating that it was targeted, you know, like that. Right, right. I had offended somebody with a sad <laughs> folk song somehow <laughs> enough to shoot up my house. But the, the really... Do you think, I mean, that's, you brought up an interesting point, which I didn't think about, which is that obviously there's this horrific amount of gun violence and gun problems in this country. I, I don't think that can, I know some people do deny it, but I don't think you can deny it. And yet I still feel that I somewhat feel immune to it. Like the odds are, but, but 
that's not the truth. Like, no, I feel really good now. Because you've got yours in the past? Yeah, I feel like yeah. statistically I'm I'm in good shape for, for a yeah. little while. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> yeah, like when you almost, just, But I took stats once and mm. I didn't understand any of it except for that that's not true. <laughs> well, I don't care. <laughs> All that really matters is that it feels true. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> so That's the placebo effect. No, the, the, worst, the worst part, honestly, is that my wife has been doing a lot of thrifting. Okay. And she, she's, she has an she has a Instagram called Stuff in Our House. And it's pretty incredible. You should all. She's always done that. You wrote yeah, about that she, in the book. No, she, that she's she, got a she, she tremendous a, amount of pop culture. She's an incredible curator of stuff. She has an incredible eye. So she goes to you know, like village discounts and, and she comes back with like a million dollars worth of stuff that she paid 80 cents for. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, it's just this amazing stuff. But earlier that day, she had come home with this, uh, this decor decoration for Christmas, it, uh, which was a snowman with a plunger that you put in your bathroom, <laughs> which was cute enough. Just for I the didn't, season? Yeah, I guess, I don't know, we, we, we weren't gonna keep, I don't know why, I honestly don't know why she brought it home, but anyway, <laughs> we're Jewish. <laughs> I guess a snowman is non-denominational, but. We have a Hanukkah bush now. My younger son in, insisted on it. That's. Yeah, all right, anyways, go ahead. <laughs> I've never heard that term, Hanukkah bush. I can show, I'll send you a photo. All right. Yeah, I don't think it is a term. Yeah. Okay. It's a Christmas tree with a Hanukkah decoration on top of yeah. it. Yeah, all right. Okay. Anyways, I get got, it. You got the <laughs> so you got the plunger or the you got a snowman with the plunger. Um, and you know, after the the gunfire, you know, we're like we're turning lights out. We're um, you know trying not to go near the windows, but I want to go near the window because I want to see if I can see anybody. For all I for all we knew, there was somebody lying dead in our front yard or on the side yard. It wasn't really easy to hear which direction the fire came from. And so we're kind of like, you know, sneaking around the house, just terrified. And I, I walk in the kitchen and this, this snowman says, what you doing? <laughs> no, no, <laughs> no way. Yeah. <laughs> no. It talks, the thing talked. <laughs> it is talking. <laughs> Cause it's supposed to be in the bathroom and it says, what you doing? <laughs> Never mind, I don't need to know. <laughs> and it has a bunch of, it's like, are you feeling okay? You look flush. That's good, that's good. That's good. You gotta it's, hand it to the- It was worth 80 cents. <laughs> but- You but, gotta keep it now. But, but yeah, after my, my heart rate spiked to whatever is <laughs> just below what would kill you, because I'm still here, but I really felt like, the adrenaline of what you doing? Yeah. It's like somebody shot up our house and it's like a vaudeville comedian. Did you? And he's in the house Did now. Did you have any inclination to respond? No, because like now, then once my heart rate got just, just a little bit lower, I wasn't scared anymore, I was angry. <laughs> and I was like shaking with a, with a screwdriver, taking the batteries out of it. Angry at the plunger, not at the people who shot. I was the angry. House. Yeah, I was angry at the snowman at the plunger. It had already done that to my wife. We were in different parts of the house, so she had already, she was already dead from the snowman. Um, yeah, so maybe this. And, is... and, and then when it happened to me, she's like, "Yeah, I know." <laughs> not quite the same genre of humor, but you, you wrote a, a memoir a couple years ago, and I'm not gonna, ask, everybody should pick up the memoir. It's wonderful. I'm sure you did a thousand interviews for it. I'm not gonna revisit I all that. I did some today. Did you, for the memoir? Yeah. Really? Well, that's good that it still was, has. Well, it was, it was, it was um, import, uh, it foreign, came out in edition? Portuguese. What's the, you know what the title of it is there? Uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> they always get, they always... I know that in some countries, the title, Let's Go So We Can Get Back. Which is what is here. It made no sense. Right, that which always happens. So then yeah. it becomes something like yeah, and it's like, let's go so that we can return to where we once, you know. I yeah. don't know like. You mentioned something in it that I have to admit I didn't know existed. I, I grew up on the East Coast, and I always came here. And this is terrible of me thinking that. 
but we have sarcasm. The Midwest doesn't really have sarcasm. And then you start talking about Midwestern sarcasm as a subtler form, and I realize that I am the stupid one, that I just didn't pick it up. So what is Midwestern sarcasm? Um, I mean, it's it's hard to describe. Uh, it, it's, uh, it's just so subtle that you don't really, you don't really pick up on it until you're, you know, you just bolt awake in the middle of the night and go, oh, that, I can't believe <laughs> they didn't mean that. That wasn't, that wasn't sincere. Yeah, you're just like, it just like it hits you. So they'll say an, something kind of nice, it's like, but it's kind of a way of saying, oh, look at you, you're cute. Yeah, like um, with that song, I love what you're trying to do with that song. <laughs> <laughs> they don't mean that. No, that's a, that's not very subtle. That's actually kind of right. a, like a common thing with like bands you don't like when they get off the stage. You, you know, there's a whole array of things you can say without lying. Yeah, like, yeah. like I saw you up there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, you did it. Uh, um, but yeah, like I love. How long have you guys been playing together, roughly? <laughs> <laughs> I have a question on that note. I, I, I guess a serious question. Like, is there a difference between the Wilco of a, Wil a band that's any band, but let's say you're a band, because that's the band you know, that's played together for three years versus a band that's. I saw you guys in Nashville. Recently? Yeah, recently. Oh, a couple, yeah. About them. It was great, great show. And I was like, mm -hmm. this band, they know exactly what everybody else on the stage is going to do at every single moment, even when they're being improvisational. They can just, they have a whatever you call it, like a, you don't even have to talk, right? You right. understand that. Well, I, I mean, it depends. I mean, I imagine there are bands that have been together for three years that develop some sort of chemistry and uh, musical trust that allows it to feel intimate, and that's what it's really built on. Music is an intimate form of communication, and to make it with someone else, you have to kind of be wanting to say the same thing and wanting to uh, allow yourself to be, you know, trust that person to, to support you when you're taking a solo, for example, or, you know, I, I think it requires a lot of uh, trust, and I think that for a band like Wilco, um, we maybe weren't very trusting, as young people, and as we've gotten older, uh, I'm, I'm saying like there's a band that could really trust each other if from they're really one. mature from day one. Yeah. But uh, for us, it 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 took um, years of experience of looking around and going, oh, the same guys are still here. So I guess yeah, we're so the opposite of that would be that when you first start out, I imagine. You're, you're probably living in the same city. You might not have significant others. You might not have children. And you are spending time in a van on mm -hmm. the road constantly. And then you reach a point where you are where many of the band members can say, well, I'll, I'm going to go live in Maine or Nashville or wherever it is. And when it's time to get together, we're right back to where we are. Right. But you're, you don't have that closeness day to day. No, but everybody, um, everybody in Wilco stays really committed to playing music. They every, everybody plays music when they're not in Wilco. And that all benefits Wilco. When we get back together, every, yeah. it's not like someone has to relearn their instrument, or any, you know, <laughs> you know, like what is this? <laughs> what did you? But yeah, Uncle Tupelo, we, we lived in an apartment that was eighty dollars a month without toilet paper. Without toilet paper, yeah. no, we did have. We had a phone book. <laughs> <laughs> this, we it's don't need book. to go there. It's yeah. in my book. So. When I was at the show in Nashville, which was which was wonderful, you played via Chicago, and for a moment I stupidly was like, "Why isn't everybody cheering when they say Chicago?" Oh uh, yeah, <laughs> and 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 because I've been to shows here where they do, and then I was still listening intently, but I, my mind started wandering, thinking like, "Does Jeff like it when he says the name of a city and people in that city start?" going crazy, or is he just like, that's a little rock and roll ridiculous? Well, and first of all, I feel sorry that you were no, I was thinking fully, that. I, was, I, I got right back into it. I got right back into the show. <laughs> um, and then I thought maybe I mean, bands I was like, just, really? just have lyrics with town names. Oh, no, then there's there are bands that they can switch the town name <laughs> in, the, in the sports team, you know. Oh, like, that's right. How about those, you know, Giants. sports figures in your <laughs> look your local sports guys do you like i saw i saw bob dylan here a few about a month ago mm -hmm. and he was wonderful 
And other than the thousands of lyrics or hundreds of lyrics that he sang, he did not say one word to uh -huh. the audience, which is what Dylan does. And mm -hmm. do you feel ever that you want to just get up and play and not say a word to the audience? Um, no. I mean, first of all, I do feel I feel embarrassed when people cheer at a at, like I feel like I'm pandering, like I'm doing something that is showbiz, even if it's already in the lyrics. Right. I sing Manhattan and we're in New York City and people cheer. I like roll my eyes and I'm like, oh. God, why? I hate it. That's the answer to that with question. With Via Chicago, with Via Chicago, let me, I've often wondered this. You're not going to Chicago. You're, it's Via Chicago. You're not even, you're There's, through Where Chicago. I'm going is, un, is undetermined. Right. Yeah. It's not a celebratory song about Chicago in any no. way. No. Yeah, we should stop cheering. Right. <laughs> yeah. No, I don't understand cheering. At, at, at all, all. <laughs> I don't think you should have to clap at a show. I, like I, I like I'm always like, oh okay, yeah. <laughs> when I'm at shows, I'm like, it's such a weird yeah, thing. Yeah, you were up there. Like just yell, just I don't know, or individually. I like always. In, I like it when individually every at Wilco shows because I look like I need so much encouragement. Sometimes <laughs> I think that there'll be like a moment where there's a little bit of a lull, and somebody will say, "You're doing great." <laughs> Midwestern sarcasm. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's like, yeah, they're like, bless your heart. <laughs> yeah. But it, with Wilco, um, I do feel like not saying things and not talking in it at all to the audience because it's not because I don't want to talk to the audience, it's because there are five other guys up there and I feel like they're, you know, looking at their watches going, is, is, is Elvis ever going to finish this story? <laughs> you know. But when I play by myself, I, I, I feel like it's a, I've gotten more and more comfortable with being, um, I don't know, having it be a part of the show. You, you, I think it might have been in the book that, or no, it was in an interview I think you, you did with Pitchfork where you said that you like two kinds, there's, you like many kinds of music, but there's types of music that are self-liberating, like soul music or punk music, and then there's then there's art music, which you also like. Where, where do you, where does, where does your music fall into that? I think it, it vacillates between those two poles, or at least depends on. I don't know. I, I think there's a lot of different songs in Wilco, uh, in our in our discography and over the years. I've never really been the kind of person that writes songs, and I have a real clear idea of what kind of musical genre I want to be a Doesn't part matter. of. Not really. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of curious about other people's music, so I tend to like kind of reevaluate my own based on like just discovering new things and being excited by them and inspired by them. And then honestly, just sitting down, like, I wonder if I could write a song like that. And I try not to do it in a way that's like, oh, that obviously came from there. Sure. And and I don't think it's it's hardly ever been that evident. Maybe. Maybe spiders. It's obvious that I was listening to some some German bands like Noi and Kraftwerk, and really kind of rediscovering that that rhythm and those things. But for the most part, it's more just like I can't I can't listen to music anymore. I have to go try and write a song, and a lot of times um, that just uh, ends up being something. I don't know. I feel the best when it's something that I'm not. Sh I don't think I. Could have predicted coming out of me. And this is me cheating as, as an interviewer because I, I asked your wife beforehand and she told me that you nearly or did fall off a mountain. I did. I did. Uh, what, hap what happened? Near, yeah. Um, George Saunders and we're um, friends with Nick Offerman and um, the three of us went for a week long a uh, hiking trip in Glacier National Park okay. this last summer. And um, we hiked up like, a, it was like a three or four hour hike to a glacier. And then on the way down, uh, we, to get up there, we had gone over some snow fields and they were pretty steep and you kind of had to hang on to the wall. Why'd you do this? I don't really, I'm not a risk taker. Yeah. This was not a, the characteristic, I guess I just wanted to be with my friends. Sure, yeah. And I'm a follower. 
<laughs> I don't know. I don't know. So, but it, but later in the day when we went back down, it, the sun had been out a little bit. So these these um, these passages through these ice fields or snow fields were wet and much more you know slick. And um, yeah, my feet just went out from underneath me, and I fell about fifty feet down the side of a the side of a mountain, like this. You know, like. You know, and you like, land in snow. Does that help you? No, I, I managed to stop myself. I did what I was told to do by our, you know, they had a guide with yeah. us and he said, turn and face the mountain and, and you know, try and just slow yourself down. And you were okay? Uh, I did exactly that. I, I like, but I, you know, it was like, it was, it was rock. It was like a bunch of scrabble rock. And so I was all scraped up in my knees and I sent a picture home to Susie of my leg bleeding yeah. and she was like, eh. <laughs> It didn't look that bad. How you doing? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, what you doing? Yeah. yeah. No. So yeah. Um, so yeah. So I was like, I was really far below the trail, so I had to kind of like, you know, hike up the side of the mountain and try and you know find a way to get back up on the trail, which was pretty scary. But I was happy that I was alive. And then, you know, uh, then I fell again about two hours later on the same trail, but I, I just fell, uh, my feet slipped out from under me on a boulder that was really slick. Yeah. And that, like, yeah. I really hurt so bad. Uh, I had like a giant black bruise for, for weeks. What's your, what's your what's And I lost a toenail. Those don't, those, those don't never come no, back it's, cleanly. I would take yeah. my shoe off and show you right now. Yeah. It's yeah. not. You saw it here first. It is, it's, <laughs> It's terrifying. What's uh, what's your next trip as a trio? Um, like a spa. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, no, I think um, I don't know. I, I think other than that, it was a successful trip. Good trip. Uh, it was really it was really fun, and and uh, I have a I have a new lease on life. I feel like. <laughs> will you uh, will you send us out with a song? Um, sure. I'd like to sing a song about a liquor store I used to work at. Okay. Eight tiny lines of cocaine Left on a copy machine In an empty corner of a dream My sleep could not complete The sirens and the birds And you and I are too far apart and My eyes need a shade What else can go wrong now that I'm not long for wildlife seems wrong I won't stay, won't care You've got family out there black boot that cracked my front tooth it's a new kind of truth I'm getting used to
where the power lines are down. Whipping sparks around Like angels touching down Oh, I see you there Funding for the interview show is provided by Miller High Life, the champagne of beers. If you've got the time, we've got the beer. Lifeway Foods, makers of Lifeway Kefir. Visit LifeWayFoods.com to learn more about Lifeway's complete line of probiotic products, including new non-dairy plentiful and farmer cheese. Lifeway, love your guts. Byline Bank. This is the story of Village Fresh Market, written by me. This is my house, my home, uh, everything. I see these people more than I see my family. This is my life. I love it. Everybody has a story. Byline Bank helps you write yours.